Now for the rest of y'all. Do we have any blues lovers in the house tonight? <laughs> first band I was with was Baby Huey and the Babysitters. The second band was Curtis Mayfield and Impressions. That started in 1969. Uh, Baby Huey started in 1960. Um, the third band I was with was Freddie Kane. Uh, the late Freddie Kane. And then the fourth group I was with was John Lee Hooker. And I was with John Lee Hooker for 18 years. And that's when I started seeing real money in my writing ability. Uh, a check was so big that my fiance Pam misread it. She missed a zero, <laughs> which was great for us. Cook up some fried chicken. The first song on here is, is "My Hometown," sung by John Lee Hooker. When he came and sang it, I think I bought him some chicken that day. So he was eating. <laughs> Chasing you, Dennis. Uh, it's been managing me for 20 years. He got involved in that song because of what it was saying. Uh, spending all my time chasing you. He had this girlfriend that was kind of a little bit on the wild side, and he had Eddie Money singing it. And Eddie even sings at the end of the record. 
uh, Murphy's California, <laughs> referring to the lady that Dennis was uh, liking. Drink it bad whiskey. I wrote that with um, Finest Tasby. Greg Allman's label said he could sing half of a song. So I said, Dennis, we got a problem. He said, what's that? I said, uh, Greg's label said he can only sing half a song. What's what's half of a song? He said, great. We'll have him sing a duet with Katie Webster. I said, smart thinking, Dennis. So that's how that come out. I should have known. That's a song I wrote with John Lee Hooker in mind, who is singing it, because he wrote a song called I Didn't Know. I didn't know she was driving my car last night. I didn't know she was going to New Orleans. That's the lyrics of his song. And my answer to his song is, I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> if the blues was money, Eddie Money singing that one. That's almost like my theme song. If the blues was money, I'd be a millionaire. You know, I'd have a four-car garage with cars of my choice. And one of them cars would be a blue Rolls Royce if the blues was money. Uh, I'd have money in the bank to spend all the time. I wouldn't have to worry about one thin dime. If the blues was money, I'd be a millionaire. 30 Days. That was one I wrote way back when I was living in Dallas, Texas. Buddy Miles was singing it. I just wrote it, but didn't do nothing with it until I was driving Hook one day and his uh, third wife, Millie, left him. He said, dig it all off. Oh, all to all give, all to give Millie 30 days to get home. I said, Hook, that's a song. Oh, no, it ain't, no, it ain't. And that threw me off, see? So next time I saw him, he said, I've got a song I want you to hear. And he put the tape in. You got 90 days. You got 90 days to get back home. I said, wow, Hook. I thought you said it wasn't a song. Well, then I got to thinking about it. <laughs> I said, well, I got something I want you to hear. And I put in my tape. You got 30 days, baby, to get back home. All right, Hook never sang that one, but my buddy Miles ended up singing it. Uh, Drug Alley, that's for all them blues musicians that had a problem. When Buddy heard the lyrics, he, he thought I wrote that for him. <laughs> Drug Alley. Um, I've done changed. Um, that's a song I wrote back in Chicago. I'm not the same. I done change. Life is like a road. Someday it all ends. I don't change. You have the good times. Share it with your friends. Ain't nobody perfect. I'm not the same. Everybody sins. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. St. Peter, won't you let me in? I done changed. Uh, people don't care. Now, this is a song I wrote back in Dallas uh, for the homeless. Because uh, when you listen to the lyrics, yeah, people don't care if I don't get to eat. People don't care if I'm sleeping in the street. People don't care if I'm headed for hell. People don't care if I'm sitting in jail. Every city, everywhere, people just don't care. Uh, Shaken. Lydia Pence sang that one. Or ex extreme alcoholics that when they wake up in the morning they reach over to the table, the nightstand, and the first thing they put in their belly, which I used to do, was alcohol. You know, take the shakes off, you know. Shaking. Woke up early this morning, shaking from my head to my feet. But what this song's about is your spouse. I was thinking about my baby and just couldn't get to sleep. I've been thinking about your old friends and why they're not around. Is it something that I'm missing or something new you found? <laughs> and Lydia did an excellent job on it. Last but not least, we'll meet again. When Millie left Hook in 1982, I went to uh, G.K. Fowler. We called him, uh, his nickname was Dr. Boo. I said, Greg, I want you to put some chords to this, these lyrics I got here. Oh, Greg said, what are you doing? I said, uh, Hook's wife left him, and he's kind of broken up by it. So I want to give him a song that has to do with uh, We'll Meet Again. Often I wonder how long it's been since I've seen my old friend, but somehow I know before my life ends, We'll meet again. And it's real simple. And as soon as Hook heard it, because I'd always have him as a captive audience. I, you know, I was his driver from 82 to about 86. So he couldn't go nowhere when I'd pick him, when I'd drive to his house and then he'd give me the keys and we, I'd start driving his Cadillac. I'd put a cassette in and he had to sit there and listen to it. 
That was when I was with the Impressions, right before Freddie King. We was at the Apollo Theater, and uh, we had went on, and then Chuck Jackson was coming on. Any day now, I will hear you say goodbye, my love. I'll be on my way. He came on, and he looked over to the wings, and he saw Jackie Wilson standing there grinning. And and uh, Chuck Jackson said, "Ladies and gentlemen, we have a celebrity star in the, in the house tonight. Nice round applause for Jackie Wilson." And Jackie Wilson come out on the stage, that big pompadour he had. You know that back in them days, you had a process with the pompadour there. And uh, they did a duet together and brought, of course, brought the house down. And Chuck Jackson slapped him five. And his famous JW in diamonds ring from the sweat. You know, your fingers are sweaty. It it has slipped right off. It went out to the audience. Chuck Jackson stopped the show. Now, Curtis Mayfield and I are standing over in the other wing we're watching all this. And Curtis said, oh, my God. The Apollo Theater was that quiet because everybody saw that sparkling go to the audience. So everybody knew what had happened. And Chuck got on the microphone. He said, ladies and gentlemen, we just had an accident up here. Um, Jackie Wilson's ring just went out to the audience. And whoever's got it, would you please throw it back? And everybody started slowly looking to the left and to the right. And then uh, Chuck Jackson took his own ring off of his finger to put it on Jackie's as, I'm sorry I did that. And Jackie was saying, no, man, it's okay. It was an accident. No, take this. No, man, it's okay. And then as they're arguing, there's a glitter in the air. And Chuck turned and grabbed it. And it was the ring. Curtis Mayfield turned to me and he said, Cat, take a good look at that, because that's something you'll never see again. 